Hi everyone, it's Kate here. Just coming to you this Friday afternoon. I am sitting out in the, the courtyard in it at the side by side practice because it's just such beautiful weather out here today. Um, and I just thought I'd um, pose the question about how important are parents? Now, um, I didn't really quite finish the sentence when I wrote that on the topic because I really wanted to talk about how important are parents to kids' emotional and social well-being. Um, and probably all of you are thinking like I am is we're really important to, to that part of our kids' development. Um, but I suppose I want to just talk a little bit about um, the ways in which and why um, we are important to um, our kids and how they develop and some of the ways in which um, we can accentuate that role. I think certainly um, just thinking about the kinds of things things that impact on kids' social and emotional uh, well-being and development, um, parents are absolutely a big, a big factor in that. Um, so is um, the community that they're being raised in, the safety and things like that, and also genetics and temperament that, that kids come with um, when they're born. So there's some of those things that we can um, do things about. And certainly the impact of parents and the way that we interact with our kids is something that we can do something about. So the ways in which we know that, that parents are important is how they often respond to kids' uh, emotions and kids' uh, responses and behaviour. So a lot of the um, kind of influence that I um, have taken from in my work and my own parenting, um, a lot of it comes from the work of John and Julie Gottman, um, who've done a lot of amazing work in the area of relationships and attunement and um, things like that. So their, their work has been quite influential in how adults interact and engage with one another in terms of predicting success of relationships and things, but they've also been really influential in the work about how parents relate and respond to, to kids' emotions and what outcomes that means for them down the track. So they've um, done lots of research over long periods of time and then um, subsequently wrote a really great book um, called How to Raise an Emotionally Intelligent Child and um, quite a while ago now, and they've got a program that you can have a look at with that. <clears throat> but then also researchers in Australia, Sophie Havinghurst and a few other um, amazing people wrote the Tuning Into Kids and Tuning Into Teens program based on the ideas of um, how to become an emotion coach and the ways in which we respond to kids' emotions can have a really impactful, uh, positive um, result on their behaviour and subsequent maybe social emotional disorders or, or preventing those from developing. So a lot of the, um, the guidelines, I suppose, is that I follow when I and when I talk about um, you know how do we develop resilient kids and things like that is based on this premise that we acknowledge and attend to our kids um, emotional bids or emotional reactions and we certainly have to kind of look at our own um, our own baggage or our own responses as parents and and how we then um, either change or attune our um, responses to kids' um, behaviour and emotions as they go on. Now, you'll, you'll know and you'll have this experience where sometimes you can really connect very easily with your child or maybe with another child, it's not your own, but, but certainly sometimes, especially if you've got more than one child in your family, you might notice that you can attend to and respond much easier to one child maybe than other children in your family and that can sometimes be about a temperament match or mismatch that can happen um, so some people find that if they're too similar to their own um, child in terms of their personality that can make it harder to respond um, in ways that they might like to um, and in other ways some families or some adults talk about how when they are very similar to their child they understand them much easier and they can really Really empathize and step into um, their child's world easier and then respond in, in you know in a calmer kind of um, more empathic manner and that tends to be kind of helpful so one of the things that's really important that parents can do is be thinking about how much they are able to respond and how well they're able to be I suppose regulated and calm when um, kids are bringing all their emotions and sometimes um, challenging behaviors as well that come with strong emotion. One of the things that um, 
I'm learning more and more about is um, how important it is for kids to feel um, safe um, when they are having big strong emotions and how those big strong emotions often trigger our own um, reflexes of not feeling safe so we can sometimes move into a fight flight freeze sort of response um, and and become more reactive even in that moment when we're perhaps wanting and wishing that we could be calmer and more present for our child. So a lot of the um, the focus, I suppose, um, that we're hoping to sort of understand more as we want to help kids with child and um, behaviour issues is thinking about our role as parents, how important it is for us to be mindful of our own emotion regulation abilities or inabilities in that moment and how impactful that um, is for kids and, um, and, and teens uh, as well with emotional difficulties. So certainly um, keeping mind of that, that you know, when we often look at, you know, how is my kid going? Are they reacting well, badly or that kind of thing? Um, you know, therapists will often want to know um, what was happening in that moment. What was it like for you? How, um, you know, confident or capable did you feel in that moment? Um, what was your arousal kind of, you know, like in that moment? Because we all know that if we're calm and centred, um, we can be such amazing, um, you know, support for our kids when they're having these difficult moments. But we also know that when life happens and we get triggered or we have strong angry reactions or dismissive reactions because of a lot of different things going on that can inadvertently continue or exacerbate issues that our kids might be having um, and so it's not about um, blaming parents or anything like that it's just understanding that relationship and the power that we have as parents to um, support our kids in that moment um, but by really understanding that that safety and that attunement with what is going on for them is so, so important. So it's a really cool, empowering kind of thing to be thinking about our very important role in our kids' lives. Um, and I suppose it's also kind of knowing that um, when we pay attention to ourselves and our self-care and being mindful of our own emotions, we are going to do a much better job at being that support person for our, our young kids. So a lot of the work that I'm doing in my coaching um, role, parent coaching um, education stuff, is really looking at um, our self-care, our um, own mindset, our own metacognitions that we have, perhaps about our um, how we were raised and what how emotions were kind of talked about. Um, but yeah, certainly kind of touching base with um, what what's that? What are we like in those moments um, when we're having difficulty with some of our, our kids' behaviour or emotions or whatever it might be? So parents are very very important, um, and I find an amazing group of people to work with because when you're helping young people and kids and teens you're working um, really closely with parents and, and all those supports that go around them. So I hope this Friday afternoon, you are finding some way to nurture yourself and your own self-care and um, thinking about sort of attuning and um, getting that lovely connections going going with your child, particularly if they're having a really tricky time at the moment, which you know we're finding is on the rise at the moment. There's certainly the pandemic is um, you know increasing everyone's and has increased everyone's stress levels um, and and reduced, I suppose, a lot of the, the other supports that might normally have been around when we've got our communities kind of connected at the moment. Um, it's it's harder to do that, being separated by space and time and um, things like that. So it's even more important, I suppose, be paying attention to how we're nurturing ourselves and, and looking after each other. So have a lovely Friday afternoon wherever you are and I will talk to you again soon. Take care.